Yeah, so hi everybody. So today I came to talk about older adults' susceptibility to phishing as a, a function of weapons of influence, life domains, and also gender. So I'm a computer security researcher, uh, also research phishing. And for the record, I'd like to say that I love to interact with older adults, especially older male. No, there's nothing freak about it. It's just that when I was a little girl, I wish I had a, a grandfather. I watched all these movies where the kid had this loving relationship with this wise grandfather, and I just wished that for me. I never had it because both of my grandfathers had died before I could remember. And until recently, that's why it was my idealized view of older adults. So when I start studying fishing and aging, uh, uh, it was in collaboration with the psychology department at the UF, the Institute on Aging, of course, because I'm a, a computer security researcher. Uh, it was just like a spiritual awakening for me. So let me summarize some facts about this demographic. Older adults, as you can see in this animation, are the fastest growing segment of the population in industrialized uh, nations. So you see here uh, uh, as, as the animation projection uh, for uh, 95, 2000, you see the bar of 65 and older increasing, which is like sometimes we consider the, the threshold for older adults. As you go to the future, 2015, 2030, 2035, 2040, and you see how, how they are growing. 2030, they are projected to be 20% of the U.S. population. They also, uh, they uh, control over half of the U.S. financial wealth. And very importantly, they occupy many positions of power. This means that many important decisions in finance, in politics, in law, uh, are going to be made by older adults and we impact our lives in an individual and in a societal level, so we should care. But in terms of fishing, what makes this demographic stand out? Well, unfortunately, as we age, some of our cognitive abilities decline. Uh, research shows that uh, crystallized intelligence, which means experience, the ability of seeing the big picture while this intelligence increases. Fluid intelligence, which means how fast we can process information, how much information we can fit in our working memories, uh, decrease. And also our sensitivity to deception also decreases, which means that we become more trusting. What a dangerous combination. So if I did not convince you, I hope John's story convinced you. So this is John. John is an older adult, 67. He lives in Washington, D.C., married with three kids. And in March 2016, John was a target of a phishing email whose goal was to make him enter his credentials into a fake uh, Gmail page. The attack ended up to being successful and the adversary got hold of John's emails and these emails had embarrassing discussions about his boss that were leaked to the public. Many people believe that this leakage uh, might have had an influence in the U.S. presidential elections. Again, cannot get more serious than that. Yes, I understand that John's aides were also tricked, but please notice that the target was John, and many older adults also don't have incompetent aides to, to help them. So I was talking, I give the example of John and phishing, but what's phishing? Phishing is, 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 is social engineering in the cyber world. Social engineering is as old as time, and we are social engineering more often than you think. So for those of you that have kids, you know that you're a social engineer by them almost every day, right? So the problem, the, the, the social engineering, the, the goal is to influence you into performing an action. The problem is when this uh, uh, influence is made by uh, deceptive arguments, and this action will go against your best interest and will benefit the social engineer. Have you noticed that I use the word influence? Influence is key in social engineer. And it turns out that influencing people is a piece of cake. Let me explain this to you with a story about turkey mothers. 
Turkey mothers, in general, they're very good mothers. But there's something odd about their mothering behavior. Their mother behavior is trig triggered only by the cheap, cheap sound that turkey chicks make. All other, I mean, obvious uh, traits like appearance of the cheeks, uh, smell, touch, research shows that plays a very minor role in their minor behavior. So everything means like everything boils down to if the chick makes the cheap, cheap sound, the mother will care for it. If the chick doesn't, the mother will ignore it, and some of them might kill them. So an experiment illustrated this very odd behavior to the extreme. The, do you know which cute animal is this? Polecat? Do you know the relationship between the polecat and the turkey? One eats the other. Very good. The polecat is the turkey natural predator. So the researcher presented the turkey mother with a stuffed polecat, and as expected, the turkey mother mounted a vicious attack on the polecat. Then the researcher presented the turkey mother with, the, with a stuffed polecat that had a small recorder inside that made the cheep cheep sound. Guess what? The turkey mother nurtured it. And you guys are thinking, how absurd, right? She will embrace a natural predator just because it makes the cheep cheep sound, and she might kill one of her cheeks if, she, if it doesn't make the cheep cheep sound. So it turns out uh, that these fixed pattern actions or heuristics are very common in many species, including the human species. In most of the, the times, uh, these heuristics are very beneficial because they allow us to make quick, good decisions without consuming too much brain power. The problem is when an adversary tries to uh, use our heuristics against us, in effect playing the cheap, cheap sound on us. So my lab and, and uh, Professor Natalie Ebner's lab, we set out to understand older adult susceptibility to well, uh, to common heuristics or principles of influence that are used in our daily life and in the context of emails, uh, an email setting. And there are six of them. Also, and you guys are gonna find, okay, this, I, I, this, I, I know these principles, of course. So authority, people tend to comply with requests made by figures of authority. Scarcity. Opportunities seem more valuable to us when their availability is limited. So who, who doesn't uh, get tempted by phrases like, oh, this promotion is only valid until Friday? Uh, commitment. Once we take a stand, we feel pressure to behave consistently uh, with uh, our commitment. Uh, the, the human brain uh, aches with inconsistency. So let me give you an example. Imagine Jonah, Jonah is a dog lover, and he feels devastated every time he hears cases of animal abuse, and he's very vocal about that on Facebook. And then one day he receives this email inviting him to sign a petition to end animal cruelty in cosmetic testing. Don't you think that he will feel complied to sign the petition? Liking, people prefer to say yes to those they, they, they know, they like, they, they feel that are similar to them, could be, and the similarity could be anything, gender, age, alma mater, country of orange, you name it. Reciprocation, whenever people give you a gift or do you a favor, you feel in depth, you can help it. Uh, and social proof, whenever in doubt, people tend to look to those around them to guide their decisions. So in our study, the goal was to validate empirically our hypothesis of older adults' pronounced susceptibility to phishing attacks involved. And, and we want to know how the susceptibility varied when we varied these different uh, weapons of influence and when we placed these phishing emails in different life domains, for example, health, financial, legal, security, social. Our study was behavioral-based, micro-longitudinal, it lasted 21 days and at home. The participants were not informed about the true nature of the study. They were told it was a study about how people use the internet. And we asked them to install a browser extension in their main computer uh, that recorded all the URLs that they visit for the study period of 21 days. And then they received, without their knowledge, 
21 counterbalancing phishing emails over the, the, the study period, one per day. We recruited 158 participants in the North Central Florida area, uh, 99 young, 59 uh, older, 65 or older, roughly divided between male and female from different demographics. And this is an example of an email that a participant from Alachua County would have received. Dear John Smith, our resource have indicated that you have a parking violation from December 17, 2015 at Southwest 89 Avenue in Gainesville, Florida at 334. Please go to our website to uh, have more information about the violation or pay your fine or refute your ticket link. Uh, sincerely, Susan Smith, uh, Alachua County Traffic Correspondent. So this email combines the authority weapon of influence, the county traffic correspondence, with the legal life domain, the possibility of breaking the law, a parking violation. So in all the emails the participant uh, received, we counterbalanced the gender of the sender, the weapon of influence, and the life domain that the email was placed into. And uh, to increase believability, the emails were personalized. We addressed participants by their names. And the emails include events uh, and information about the county that the participant lived. And every email had a unique sender and contained uh, a link that directed the participant to, this, to a static, uh, harmless static web page designed by a research group. And this is one example of one of the, the web pages, the facade web pages we had. We created 22 fake accounts, half male, half female. And our central variable, every male had a link, and our central variable uh, susceptibility to phishing was operational, operationalized when the participant clicked on the link of the email, which means that the participant would have fallen for the attack. For example, if the phishing email uh, was a drive bound, bound, uh, by download that installed ransomware in, in, in his computer, he, he would have fallen for the email and he, his computer would be compromised. Uh, to prevent uh, the fake accounts from being flagged from the providers, uh, we and our research assistants, uh, we created content for these emails from these accounts six months before the study started, during the pilot study, and also during the main study. Further, at the end of the study, we paid an extra compensation for the participants to collect the contents of their spam folder to analyze whether or not our emails were ending up there. So what did you find? Yes, uh, uh, we found an overall high susceptibility to phishing. 43% of the participants fell for the emails at least once. And a small portion, 12%, uh, click on more than one phishing email during the study period. And we found no correlation between the day, the, the day of the click and the day of the participant was in the study. We found the first clicks towards the beginning, towards the middle, towards the end. Uh, yes, the older adults were more susceptible uh, to the attacks, and we were surprised to find an effect, and a huge effect for older women. They were the most susceptible group. Regarding the weapons of influence, influence and susceptibility, so here I highlighted the results that we found the statistical significance. Uh, young adults were highly susceptible to scarcity, and older adults were highly susceptible to reciprocation. And both groups, no age difference, were highly susceptible to authority. For life domains, again, highlighted the results where we find statistical significance. There is no age, there is no age uh, difference, but both groups were highly susceptible to the legal life domain, to the possibility of breaking the law. We're very surprised that health and financial uh, uh, didn't play a role. Uh, it might be that it was like inf they, they, the participants hear so much about scams by email or, or medications being uh, uh, sold via spam. That might be something that they transferred to the study. We also investigated uh, low sus uh, the, the self-reported susceptibility, how they evaluate themselves and uh, uh, in self-report. So in the last day of the study, they uh, received another set of 21 emails that they didn't and after the briefing that they didn't uh, uh, see before, and we asked them to rate these emails uh, uh, related to how, how interest they found, how likely the argument was if they were a click on the email, and, and they would rate this from one to five. 
And as you can see, the self-reported susceptibility was low. Uh, so it was a discrepancy between behavior and self-report. And this discrepancy was mo mostly pronounced in older adults, something that's concerning. Um, OK, so, so take home message. So uh, the usable security community has been doing a tremendous job in, in, in progress with usable solutions and warnings, uh, uh, solutions for phishing, for SSL. But I think we can do better, because one shortcoming of the solution is, is that they come in a one-size-fits-all. And our research shows that one size does not fit all. Uh, we advocate that security communications should uh, um, target a specific demographics, and, we, and as uh, aging researchers, we advocate and for the uh, target specific care for the older adult population because they are vulnerable for, for the variety of reasons. We think this, this approach is better because uh, the, the, uh, the warnings, they will target the vulnerabilities of the demographics, will generate less warnings, will require less from people, and will lead to more compliance and less habituation. Uh, as future work, my group uh, is investigating natural language processing to detect influence in emails based on the, result, the, the research that we, we the res our results. So how much time do I have? Okay, almost nothing. I'm almost done. And, and to create warnings about cues to deception in email in a target fashion. Thank you. That, that was all. Florian Schaub from the University of Michigan. Um, interesting talk. What I was wondering is, so you mainly focused on how the emails are crafted and worded, but um, the link is often uh, like a cue to detect phishing mails. Um, can you comment on how you construct the links, what kind of links you use? Okay, so we, we purchased domains uh, that were related to the, to, the, to, the, to the life domain, for example, North Florida Social or Alachua County Social, and so we purchased several, several domains that were credible. So the, the, the links, they were not ugly links that had numbers or weird characters. So they were credible. Uh, we did that because we believe the target phishing emails, they, they want to be successful. So they want to, they want to, the, they, they, they would target someone like Joan Podesta. But I, I understand your point. Like, probably if the links were weird, we might have had different results. Hello, I have a question regarding the recruitment. So how did you introduce participants regarding the study? If you introduced that, that you will be sending phishing mails, that would have influenced their behavior about seeing every email. Then I was just curious to know whether you use any deceptive measures to recruit participants for your study. So, so we didn't tell them there was a security research, a security uh, um, research with the, the cover up story was that I study about how people use the internet. The only thing that they knew is that they would install this extension that will track the URLs, the URLs that they visit during the study period. Makes sense. Thank you. But we debriefed them. <laughs> um, so with NASA, UTS, uh, Sydney. Um, just a quick question on why do you think all the women were more vulnerable to phishing emails? Is there, do you have an idea or? Well, this, this requires another study. My, my collaborator, which is a psychologist, she has a hypothesis that, like she, she said, oh, this is my hypothesis, but I need to, there is needs of research. Uh, so sex homo, hormones. It's women, it seems that we lose sex hormones more abruptly than men. And there is some uh, indication that sex hormones might play a role on cognition. So I'm not saying that's the reason. It's her hypothesis that would, she would be very interested in investigating. But we have no basis, it's just hypothesis. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.